Hi, um, my name is Naveen Mishan. I teach Katona Yoga. My studio is in Bedford Hills, New York. What was your first motivation in practicing yoga? Um, uh, I study religion. For me, it's about God. It's about knowing that the universe is perfect and the universe is functional and intelligent and fitting and yoga gives me a technique to participate in that intelligence. You participate actively because you have even created a, a style. Well, you know, um, I think of yoga like music. So in some ways, all Hatha yoga is the same in that you're playing with an asana. So you have, or rather you're playing with your body, that's your instrument. You're playing with your mind, that's musician. You're playing with your breath, that's the tone. And then of course, there's different styles, which is just different music. So I've done yoga for 40 years and I think the music changes on depending what you need. So when you're young, you need to jump up and down a lot. When you're old, you need techniques to soothe different parts. So um, in some ways, I teach a classical Hatha yoga, right? But most of it isn't the teaching, it's the practice. Is yoga works, it has great practice, it's technical, and I practice technique. So when we speak about Katana yoga, do we speak about Allegro, Moderato? Well, when we speak about Katana yoga, I guess, you know, a big piece of my metaphor is origami. Right, so I play with the idea that um, when you play with origami, you play with a flat piece of paper, and then by virtue of folding it, you make function. Right, and when you want a cup, you want a cup that holds water. When you make a boat, you want a boat that floats. So I think of asana as origami for bodies. So when you make shapes, it's all about function. And the artists make shapes that are functional, so that eventually you have more fun, you're better adjusted, you can do better things. I mean, yoga for me is about power. So it's about powerfully manipulating mind, body, breath, and I do through asana. But what kind of yoga? It just depends. So if I'm with old people, um, I'll score a piece of music that is appropriate. If I'm with somebody young, you score a piece of music that they should be able to play. The goal really isn't the music, it's the individual learning how to use technique. Okay. You actually brought something new into yoga. It might not be so new, but Tao into yoga. Yes, well, um, uh, I guess when, when I think, when I first started to do what classes call Hatha yoga, it's very infused by the Indian narrative. But yoga is not Indian. Yoga is a dialogue between your mind, your body, your breath. It's about knowing how to triangulate. It's very, um, it's universal and that archetype's universal. Everybody has a body, everybody has a breath, everybody has a mind, and every culture manipulates it. So I use a lot of Taoist material, I use a lot of geometry, I use a lot of mythology. Um, I think when you play with mind, you play with imagination. So I'm very imaginative in my metaphors. I think that, uh, you know, the dialogue is much bigger than just um, Ayurvedic or an Indian narrative. I think it's about mind, body, breath. So uh, Taoist is in it, but I think all yoga is infused with the same stuff. So eventually, it's all familiar. You can go into anybody's room, and it's like being a baker. You're going to be playing with certain equipment. You need an oven. You need to know how to calibrate. You need to know how to measure. You need to know timing, right? But then the goal is, what are you going to produce, right? And people make great cakes. People make lousy cakes. Yoga doesn't fix anybody. Insight helps. So to me, it's technical. You use techniques for the insight. Yoga has great techniques. Concretely, as an yes. example, yes. Uh, if we are making a chocolate cake, we yes. need a recipe. If we are doing the moon salutation, yes. Katona Yoga. Exact same thing. You'd have a recipe. So, so the first thing I always do is I, because, you know, I build my recipes and my templates. So most of my recipes are built on the template of Magic Square. It's a grid pattern. So I basically have a recipe pamphlet, right? And the first thing you always do is read the recipe. So I know if I'm going to do a practice that demands uh, that you're very lyrical and that you're going to jump and you're going to be very physical, well, I read that score in advance. Just like if I'm going to make that chocolate cake, I read what ingredients I'm going to need in advance. Then I also know that I need an oven. I know how to calibrate my oven. I know I have three burners. I have burners in the lower body, burners in the middle body, burners in the top. I have the burners of desires, I have burners of imagination, I have, you know, lots of different equipment. I know how to calibrate. So, you know, so yes, first I would read the recipe, then I would make sure I have all my equipment, 
then I'd make sure I have all my ingredients, then I'd make sure I know what I'm making it for, and then I'd put it together. So a moon salutation is no different than a cake. And my job when I do therapeutics, because my real strength is the diagnostics, is the therapeutics, is um, I read, or rather, I taste the cake someone else makes, and then I can tell you how they made it. Because any chef will know how somebody else made the cake. So same cake, but the individual's in it. And that's where it's a practice. Following the teachings of um, Swami Satyananda, when he wrote about uh, psychology of yoga, he spoke about the swan principle. S for strength, W for weakness, um, A for ambition, and N for needs. It's Beautiful. It's sort of the personality of a, a, right. a yogi, let's say. What would be your strength? You just mentioned it now, your strength. Well, I, I, you know, it's funny because you say that, and I would start with a different paranoia. I'd sit there and go, I play for Trinity. My whole game is a dialogue of Trinity, meaning that anytime you play with polarity, you play with duality, so you have a right hand, you have a left hand, but of course you have a third hand. You have a right foot, you have a uh, left foot, of course you have a third foot. So you have a right eye, you have a left eye, of course you have a third eye. What is explicit is what you can see, what is implicit. Um, really gives you that third piece. So when you fold origami in people, you're playing, or rather when you fold origami in paper, you have two backs, you have two fronts. But when you fold organic people, structures, you have thirds, front, back, back, front. So, so I play for Trinity, and so I would start with saying that the dog of Trinity is strength, structure, stability. So I play for strength, structure, stability. Stable in the base, able in the middle, and you know, available for the vision. You put it all together and I look for integrity because I know if you want to help others, first you have to be well adjusted. I know if you want to meditate, right, it, I think of the body as a house. So if I'm going to meditate in my house, first I'm going to clean it. Meditating is an act of being. Anapana, pranayama, asanas are acts of doing. So I do a lot of stuff to put myself in a state of being. So, so those are a couple of my principles. So you, you really work on a holistic point of view? Yeah, well, I, yes. I, I think the goal is to become well-adjusted so you can support not only personal well-being but universal well-being. I think that you can't meditate in a house on fire, so first you put out your fires, right? I think before you can truly have the ability to help others, you have to know how to help yourself. So, uh, you know, but that again, you have the duality of in and out, and then you have the mediation of the third, which is the whole goal of practice, mediate the narrative. Do so. you think it's important to practice with following a tradition? Okay, so I really do have a whole line on this one. So I'll start with the Western narrative, that I think in the old days, when you wanted to be a baker, you had to join a guild. When you wanted to be a, um, an architect or a builder, you had to join a guild. And when you joined a guild, which is very mystical and very esoteric, same thing as a tradition, you made deals, that you give them a certain number of years, that they're your masters, and that you're not going to give away the trade secrets because it's magic to know how to play with yeast. It's magic to know how to measure up. It's magic to know how to produce. So that's the goal, really, of traditions, is to pass along magic that has been codified, that has been um, protected, and also that can be trained. So that's the beauty of a tradition. I think today uh, life is open source. Anybody can learn how to bake. Anybody can go and find out how yeast is produced. Anybody can learn how to do anything because you can go on YouTube and you can learn things that um, aren't just in one tradition and also aren't now, um, what's the word for it, thinned out by the tradition because traditions get old, right? So and also ingredients change and times change. So I think you have to change the language, not to say that you're changing the archetype or the magic, but you update it. So I would never talk about a chariot. I would talk about a car. Uh, you know, I would talk about, you know, when I want to talk about meditation, I talk about knowing how to be in your house and being able to sit and have a cup of tea and knowing that you've attended to what you should. So, so I think traditions have a lot of value and I'm very academic. I read a lot, I study a lot, I practice a lot, but I also know that the world today is open source and anybody can learn anything. And so that's why today you can learn Ashtanga, you can learn Iyengar, you can learn uh, such non stuff. You can learn anything, and then your job is go home and do it. Yes, and then of course you have to keep going back to, it's like saying what kind of yoga you do. It's, saying, it's really like saying what kind of baker are you? You bake, you bake. Once you know how to bake, what kind of reader are you? You know, first nature of potential. 
you know, to learn something. Second nature is training, but third nature is really having that principle that allows you to go, well, now that I can read because it's in my potential and I have formal training, what do I want to learn? What do I want to read? And then once I start reading, what new books have come out? So, uh, you know, it, that's what I mean by technique. You want to teach somebody how to bake, but then you want them to go off and bake. And why bake? Because it gives you joy, it uses time efficiently, it feeds others, it makes you healthy. I think the, beaten, the big defeat in life is mental illness, and I think the reason why one develops practice is to help people not end up mentally ill. To know how to use time, to know how to understand, you know, so when you do an asana, it's not for the asana, it's for the insight. How do I make it work? Well, the first trick of making anything work is make sure you fit. So my main metaphors are balls and mitts, hands and gloves, feet and shoes, plugs and sockets. You know, your kneecap fits your armpit, your eyeball fits your eye socket. The goal of practice is to know that the universe is functional and fitting and awesome. How do, how do you measure the success of your recipe? Um, well, it's very easy. I have recipes for joys, recipes for disaster, and one always knows if the cake comes out well. It'll smell good, it'll taste good, it'll be fluffy, it won't be, the consistency will be right. People will want to eat it, people will want seconds, and when everybody goes home, uh, you will know that you baked it well. And I can tell you a recipe for a terrible cake. You know, don't calibrate your oven, don't, you know, measure your proportions, right, invite your friends over too early, don't know how to bake that cake and think that that's going to be what you're going to give people, make a lousy cake because you forgot to check your timer, and then have a big mess to clean up. Uh, it is very easy to know if your poses are working. Namaste. Namaste, thank you.